You have all these people like pickup artists that are purely focused on the practical aspect, but don't understand anything of the internal struggles you face when people give you advice. Can you make a video about virginity? I'm an adult virgin and I'm massively insecure about it. I used to have a ton of insecurities tied to my virginity, thinking I hadn't had sex because I wasn't funny enough, interesting enough, kind enough, attractive enough, etc. Dr. K's videos, I've managed to separate all of these insecurities from my virginity. I have friends, including girls, that think I'm funny, interesting, kind, attractive. But despite this, just the fact that I've never had sex bothers me. No matter how much I try to convince myself it doesn't mean anything, a part of my mind goes to the fact that I want to but haven't, and it, mu it must be because of some kind of flaw. And society claims to be supportive of virgins, especially on the internet, but in reality, it's not the case. I get bullied, made fun of, pitied, etc. And even if people don't actually care if you're a virgin, when they use it as an insult, it hurts. For example, when someone says something misogynistic and someone says you clearly never felt the touch of a woman, it still feels like a personal insult implying that people who can't get laid are like that because they're misogynistic. When in reality, some of the people I know who are the most popular with girls are massively misogynistic. When people offer advice for dealing with this, it's always useless. They either say it's easy to get laid and it's your own fault if you can't, which makes the insecurities worse, or they say you just shouldn't care, like I don't battle con like I don't battle to convince myself every day that it's not something to be ashamed of, and that I could just wake up one day and become unbothered with ease, which also makes the insecurities worse because now I'm both insecure about being a virgin and about caring. Just change, just be different. Or they say work on yourself, which is good general life advice and something I do and helps a, a lot in many parts of my life but does not help at all for this particular issue. Even in this community, I've heard those kinds of things. The only people who actually seem to listen and validate your experience are red pillars and black pillars, but I don't agree with either of those communities. The only person who seems to actually understand and offer use useful advice to lonely men without turning to misogyny is Dr. K, which is why I really feel like it would be really helpful if he made a video specifically on the topic of how to not be ashamed when you're a virgin despite trying to get laid. Okay, looks like I have big shoes to fill. Really appreciate the post. I think it's really great that we have a place that we can talk about this kind of stuff without resorting to toxic communities. So let's try to understand like, what's the deal with virginity? So like sometimes, we are virgins, right? So we're at a particular age. You know, I've heard people complain about being a virgin at the age of 30, 35, even 60, 65. I was talking to a monk once. I was talking about his regrets in life. Um, but also like 19, 18, 17, even 15. So we all, or not all, but society basically conditions us to value being able to have sex. And it sort of makes sense from an evolutionary perspective, right? Like, so like the purpose of life is procreation. So like, if you're not procreating, you're like not worthy in some way. And then that, that kind of maybe general evolutionary thing then gets extrapolated, overinterpreted, you know, pulled far, far, far away from evolutionary biology. And people start making generalizations in society about your value as a human being, whether you've gotten laid or not laid, right? People do that. And so there are a lot of people out there who try to be supportive and it's like, hey, you know, just like work on yourself, like you'll be okay, like it's all right. And I think that this is where, as the person sort of mentioned, the red pill and the black pill communities are very emotionally validating in this way, right? They're the one place where people are gonna sort of like acknowledge that this is a problem. They're gonna do very different things with it. So the red pill community is here's a guide to get laid, right? It's kind of like, this is the way of the world. The black pill community is gonna say, and I'm generalizing here as well, you can't get laid you're screwed just like we are, we might as well all give up, right? Because there's no hope. So if you're someone who's a virgin and you're insecure about it, which sort of makes sense, right? Because like the reason you're insecure is because there is this societal pressure. And even if some people are supportive, like people still kind of like, you know, you're going to get a double take. Even if someone's trying to be nice and you kind of tell them, oh yeah, I've never had sex before. Like let's say you're on your third date with someone. You're like, yeah, I've never had sex before. Because right? y'all are talking about previous partners. Like you're going to get a double take. Like, you're going to get that tiny amount of judgment. You're going to get it like, oh, you know? And then like, what does that mean? Is there something wrong with this person? Like, uh, like, what are they thinking now? Like, do I want to have sex with someone who's never had sex before? Like, I, there's all kinds of like implicit judgments. And then the problem is that if we're in this situation, there isn't really a clear way out, right? So is this an issue of insecurity and shame? Because if this is an issue of insecurity and shame, like I can go work on myself. I can go learn about my insecurities. I can meditate. I can go see a therapist. 
I can learn about all this stuff and I can even fix my insecurity and shame. But fixing your insecurity and shame doesn't like automatically mean you're going to get laid, right? Like obviously. But the people who sort of advise you to fix the insecurity and shame and like don't worry about being a virgin, it's not like you've, you can do that, but it's, it's not like people are lining up outside the door. It's like you, you, you're like, I'm cured of shame and you walk around with like a sign and then people are like, oh, like let's have sex. It doesn't work like that. On the flip side, there are people who are sort of giving you like advice on how to get laid, right? If your problem is that you're a virgin, go get laid. Here's how you, uh, so this person is, I think, a man who's interested in women. So let's assume a heteronormative perspective here. Although the shame, especially amongst homosexual men, is like, I know it sounds bizarre, but can be very, very high. I've almost seen more shame in homosexual men because there's a presumption that if I'm gay, like gay dudes are down to have sex like all the time. So if, if you can't get laid, like all that kind of stuff, it can, the shame can be really, really crippling for homosexual men. Shame can be crippling for women as well for the same reason. It's like, oh, like dudes are down to get laid anytime. So if I can't get laid and I'm a woman, like there must be something even worse, right? So there's all kinds of stuff. Like the shame is is piling on. And when it comes to actually like going out and let's say getting laid, like there are people who will tell you all this kind of stuff. Like, oh, just like get out more and like go meet people and things like that. But when you go do that, like I don't know how to say this, but if you go, if people say like, okay, just meet more people. So let's say like I go to a party, okay? If I go to a party and like I am insecure about myself and I am ashamed about myself for being a virgin, how do you think that's going to affect how I behave at the party? How do you think that's going to affect like how I talk to girls, right? So now this is the challenge is that a lot of people are giving advice about what to do. You can sign up for some course where they'll like teach you like, like how to date. Like, oh my God, like I'm gonna teach you all the secrets that will get you laid. And then you do that, but then you're carrying this bundle of insecurity, which actually sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because if you lack confidence and you go to a social situation, then like that's gonna shine through in some way, right? And it's gonna sabotage your efforts to form intimate connections with people. So what do we, like, what do you do if you're in this situation? Because fixing the shame isn't enough. And also like just going out and trying to get laid doesn't work. And there's a really simple reason for this. And that's because the two things are synergistic. So if you really wanna learn how to overcome this, you kind of got to do both. And this is actually what I found really frustrating when I was learning to be a therapist, when I was still training to be a therapist. I remember I was, and so this could be a bias of my particular education, you know, which on paper is good, but you know, no, no training program is going to be perfect. But one, one of the things that I really frustrated me about therapy is that the standard in therapy is if a patient walks into your office and says, can you help me find a girlfriend? The right answer is not yes. The right answer is, well, what do you think? What do you think makes it hard for you to find a girlfriend, right? What does it mean to you if I were to say yes? What would it mean to you if I would say no? And when I say the right answer, this is literally what I was instructed to say, that you can't ever help a patient accomplish a particular thing. I mean, you, actually you can help, but you can't make them accomplish a particular thing, right? So people would come into the office and like, the, a therapist cannot give you a plan to find a girlfriend, which is sort of correct in, in one sense, but it really kind of bothered me. And that's when I realized that, you know, what therapy is really about, the focus is really about sort of fixing that internal shame, which isn't enough. It's absolutely a step in the right direction. And therapists can absolutely help you if you're in this situation. So don't, go, don't get me wrong there. But it's that therapy is really not focused on that practical aspect. And on the flip side, you have all these people like pickup artists that are purely focused on the practical aspect, but don't understand anything of the internal struggles you face when people give you advice, which is why advice is useless, right? So like this person says advice is useless because if someone says, yeah, just go out and just, just talk to girls. But like, what about this roiling bundle of emotions that makes that impossible for me? So what we've actually got to do is look at the intersectionality between two things. It's to acknowledge that, first of all, working on your shame is going to be insufficient and going to parties is going to be insufficient. That this is a solution that's kind of like chopsticks. Like you can't get anywhere with one chopstick. You need both of them, right? I guess you could spear something depending on what it is, but just, and that's <laughs> right. So I don't know. The analogy fell apart, but I feel like you need both of these things. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. So if you're struggling to get laid, we're going to talk a little bit about insecurities and not feeling confident in yourself as a virgin. And more importantly, how to practically apply that to like an action plan that will get you to where you want to go. So let's take a look at this. Okay. Here's the problem. Okay. So we start life and we've got a trajectory. And generally speaking, what happens in life is that we'll have particular milestones or opportunities. So let's say that like I enter high school, let's say this is the normal path where I date someone in high school or I deviate and I never date in 
high school, right? And then what happens is we've got another path over here where date someone in college or deviate, no dates in college, right? And then at some point, we're also going to have lose virginity or be a 26-year-old virgin. And now the problem is that like once we kind of miss these milestones, we've missed, we're kind of behind in two ways. The first is that each of these things is going to lead to an insecurity or an identity, right? Let's just say I'm unlovable, ugly, unable to get laid, call it whatever you want, okay? But this is like an identity that you carry forward. Now the problem is that even at this stage, when you go to a party, this identity actually goes and sabotages your attempts to get back on track. So it stops you from moving in this direction. Does that make sense? Because when you go to a party and you start talking to someone, say you're talking to a girl, we're going to assume a heteronormative male perspective because that's what the post was. It applies any way you want to cut it though. This thought... This insecurity actually prevents you from getting back on track. The second problem is as we have these experiences, we level up our social skills, right? So social XP here, social XP here. And so if you look at this person, this person, in addition to not having the identity issues, is also like level five when it comes to social skills, right? So now we get to see something else, which is that even if I fix this, so let's say that I make this and then I can go to the party. The problem is that over here, I still have level one social skills. And so now, even though I've sort of fixed the shame, I go to a party, like, I just don't know how to talk to people. Like, I don't know how to flirt, right? Because this person is not like an expert flirter. And if I go to a party and I don't know how to flirt, I fail my flirting check, then what happens? Whoop. I still end up over here. And so then what happens is like, I try all kinds of different stuff, right? So people are like, they'll, they'll say like, oh, try this and try this and try this and try this. And, and if I'm trying different things, what's gonna happen is this keeps on sabotaging th stuff. Or even if I sort of resolve that, I just don't have the social skills. And then what happens is as I fail these kinds of things, or if I go to parties, right, and I don't get laid, what happens? As I fail my flirting check, now I'm going over here and I'm reinforcing these kinds of thoughts. Does that make sense? So we get trapped is a virgin. The virgin trap. Missed social milestones. Internal insecurities. Sabotage our future prospects. And then the problem is that even if we recognize this, we can try to fix the insecurities, but then we're not leveled up enough. Or we just go out and we try to fix things. Like we just try to level up, right? We're just like, we're just going to socially participate. But we've got this huge penalty to all of our checks because of the identity issues and the insecurity. So how do we overcome this? First thing we got to do, watch out for generalizations. So I want y'all to take a look at this. What do y'all notice about this post? Society claims to be supportive. It feels like a personal insult. It's always useless, right? People that offer advice. Like, so you got to be really careful. Or they say work on yourself, which is general good life advice, you know. So you've got to be really careful about generalization. So if you look at these communities, like red pillars and black pillars, most of these communities are going to be relatively generalizing. And so why is it important to avoid generalizations? Because that's not how people actually work, right? So we talked about this a little bit, but it can be things that are generally true. But at the end of the day, you're an individual person. And like the person that you're trying to date or you're trying to have sex with is an individual person. And generalizations happen very, very naturally. So like, let's try to understand where generalizations come from. So there are two basic things that happen that we have to be super careful about. The first is that the human brain is designed to generate patterns. It's designed to generalize. That's why we do it. Like, that's like, if you look up at clouds, for example, and you see animals, there aren't animals in clouds. That's your pain, brain generating a pattern out of like random data. That's first thing. The second thing is the human brain is biased towards the negative. What does that mean? That means that you talk to 20 people about being a virgin and 19 of them are supportive and one of them is unsupportive, your brain will actually latch on to the one out of out of 20, right? So th there have been studies on this. So a good example of this, this is a common one that I use, illustrates the principle well, food poisoning. So you can eat the same dish 20 times. First 19 times, you don't get food poisoning. You get food poisoning once, and your body is going to have a visceral biological reaction to avoid that thing. We also see it in content creators, where you can be looking at chat, right, if you're streaming on Twitch, or you can upload a video to YouTube, and there can be a hundred good comments, but your brain will sift out the one negative comment. Now, why does it do that? It's because it's a survival mechanism. Because chances are, it's like, you know, if, if there are 19 ropes or 20 ropes in my shed and one of them is a snake, I need to be able to find the one bad apple amongst all the good apples. Because the bad apple is the one that really screws me up, right? 
So our brain is biased towards the negative and biased to generate patterns. When we put these two things together, what we end up with is negative generalizations about the world. Once we have negative generalizations, like why is that a bad thing? It's because it actually sabotages our future efforts. If I go into social situations believing that society hates me because I'm a virgin, that resentment towards society is not going to be attractive to other people. So I can't just tell you, just don't do that. But what I'm saying is like, pay attention to what's going on here. So anytime you have a generalization, ask yourself, how did I form that generalization? And then you've got to be super careful because the internet loves echo chambers. So you have one negative experience. And then the nice thing about the red pill and black pill communities are that they're validating, they're supportive. Like, that's a good thing, right? They're like, oh, like, you suffer, I suffer too. I'm sorry that you're suffering so much. And then as soon as you join that community, you get stuck in the echo chamber. And then lots of people are validating you, and then you accumulate evidence to support your generalization. Now, the challenge is that once you start generalizing and once you start kind of believing that stuff, it's actually going to sabotage your attempts at kind of getting into stuff in a healthy way. So once you sort of are aware of that cautionary principle, become aware of where your generalizations come from, be become aware of, more importantly, we'll get to this in a second, how your generalizations influence your actual actions, okay? And now we're going to take, we're going to go back to the drawing board and take a look at that, okay? So this is kind of the, the first thing to sort of understand. The second thing is that we need a synergistic approach. What does that mean? That means that we have to deal with the shame and we have to level up socially. Neither of these is going to be sufficient on their own. And the most common mistake that I see when anyone is talking about like getting laid or forming a relationship or whatever is that they assume that there's like one part of the answer. I hear either or. Go to a therapist to go work on your internal shame issues. Therapist isn't going to teach you how to flirt. Or... Go to a dating coach to learn how to flirt. Dating coach isn't going to fix your shame issues. That's why this problem persists, because we don't have a professional that can do both. Now, how do you do these, right? Okay, so first thing, ask yourself this question. How do I feel about myself? Write it down on one piece of paper, ideally pen or pencil instead of typing. Now, you can answer this question reflexively, right? You're going to get an, a reflexive response. Here's why the reflexive response isn't good enough. Because the reflexive response is going to come from the generalization. It's not an actual response. It's going to be like an emotional response. It's going to be a general response. So be careful about, so write it out. The second half of what you write is where the money is going to be. So become aware of, I guess, for lack of a better term, you know, self-opinion. This is really important. We'll show you how or why later. Number two, <laughs> how do I feel about other people. Once again, write minimum one page. There's going to be a reflexive answer. Other people are okay. I like other people. Uh, no, you don't. And then if you, your reflexive answer is that all people suck, that's just not true, right? Like it's not true. Not all people are bad. I mean, maybe you really believe that M maybe, right? There are probably people who are justified in believing that like, serially abused and like all kinds of stuff like there may be people who believe that maybe that's a valid perspective but i generally think that people who say those kinds of things it's the reflexive response so as you write a page you will discover the nuances in your thinking what you'll probably end up with is some amount of internal conflict some people suck or all people suck some of the time and this is a magical statement because already you've made progress and we'll, sh we'll show you how in a second okay so now you're you're going in with some amount of understanding. Now, the key thing here is that we're going to take these understandings and we're going to apply them to actual actions. Third thing, now what we're going to do is socialize with intention. So what does this mean? This means that when we, so when we socialize, we're not just going to go somewhere and hang out. There's a lot of evidence that shows that humans who are intentional do better, right? So like, for example, like if you're trying to get better at a video game, you can mindlessly grind at the video game for 10,000 hours and like you're going to stay the same, right? You can look at like there are people who have played a game for 10,000 hours and are still like hard stuck at bronze or whatever. There's data that shows that you can predict which physicians are going to be have better outcomes, which physicians are good and which physicians are bad within two years of them practicing, starting practice. And you can have a physician who has five years of experience who has better outcomes than a physician who has 35 years of experience. And what's the difference? It's because the one who has five years of experience is an intentional learner. And the one who's got 35 years of experience is on autopilot. Same thing with video games. Studies have been done on medical outcomes. It's probably your own experience as well. 
So socialize with intention. Now the question is, what does this mean with intention? Focus on friends first. Now we get to the fun part. So when I tell you to focus on friends, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go to a party and your goal is going to be Dr. K said, focus on friends. And internally, are you going to be focused on friends? No, you are not because of this. You're going to have some thoughts and feelings. When you actually go to a party, you're going to feel resentment. Why do I have to focus on friends? Why, why did I end up this way? Why can't I just find a girlfriend? Your internal response is going to hate focusing on friends. Be aware of that internal response, right? Because here's what's going to happen. Unless you do that, you're going to focus on friends. You're going to be a robot and do what people tell you to do. And it ain't going to work because your heart is not in it. You're going to be mechanically going through the motions of forcing yourself to make friends while internally you're not truly focused on it. Because internally you're like, okay, this is a step to get me laid. And now I'm going to make a friend and I'm not laid. Why did I waste my time? I'm going to make two and I didn't get laid. Why did I waste my time? I'm going to make three and I didn't get laid. Why did I waste my time? You're not truly focusing on friends. Why am I saying focusing on friends? It's because you got to level up. You got to level up. So I'm going to learn how to talk to people without being awkward. And you may say, how on earth do I learn to talk to people without being awkward? Very simple. You practice until you no longer feel. It's going to feel awkward. And then you're going to do it. And there's this little circuit in your brain that develops tolerance, right? It's the same circuit that when you jump into a pool of water, it feels cold at the beginning, and then you develop tolerance to it. The first time you tried something, it was hard. If you just keep doing it, you will no longer feel awkward. We're going to learn how to just practice socializing and having conversations with people, okay? Other things that you can do, smile. Practice smiling, right? So smile at people. You know, you don't want to be creepy about it. You don't want to like make eye contact for an extended period of time, right? Do y'all remember, remember this? We don't want to do that, right? So, but you want to smile like, so the next time you're at the grocery store, smile at the person who checks out. Hey, thank you very much. Smile at your waiter or waitress. Now, next thing we're going to do once we practice a little bit, at some point, both your greatest hope and your worst fear will happen. Greatest hope and worst fear. Are you ready for it? You're going to be attracted to someone. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then what are you going to do? Run away? No. We are going to make our intentions known. Instead of waffling around in the friend zone, we're going to let them know we're attracted to them. This is so hard. Why is it so hard? Because of this crap. Because I feel insecure. Because of this crap. And because of this crap. This is why we did those practices. As you make your intentions known, thoughts are going to come up. I'm unlovable. I'm pathetic. People suck. People hate virgins. They've always hated virgins. They used to sacrifice them to the gods. All of these thoughts are going to get in the way of you doing this. And this is how people get stuck in the friend zone and remain virgins. Because they're so afraid of the rejection that they can't make their feelings known. What is fear? But then you can say, okay, overcome your fear of rejection. What on earth does it look like? It doesn't look like rejection. What it looks like is these thoughts. This is how a fear of rejection actually manifests. And you're not going to know how to catch it or overcome it. It's like invisible, right? So you got to use some kind of detection. We need like sonar. That's where these exercises come in because you're going to know what kind of thoughts to look out for. And when they pop up in your head, you're going to be like, oh, there's my insecurity. It's not truth. It's just there's a part of me that feels this way about myself. And when I said this right here is money, unless you do this exercise, this is what your mind is going to tell you. But if your mind tells you this instead, there's room to move there. There's hope in this second statement. There's no hope in the first statement. There's plenty of hope in the second statement. Do you all get the difference there? That's why it's important to do this internal work. And once you do that internal work, when you want to make your intentions known, all of these thoughts and feelings are going to come up, but this time you're ready for them. You're going to be like, yeah, all that stuff could be true. Maybe I'll get rejected, but you know what? I got to make up for not dating in college, so we're going to get some XP either way. So acknowledge those thoughts. Maybe do a quick breathing practice, right? So you can do like find the space between inhalation and exhalation. Do something for 60, 90, 120 seconds. Put yourself in a calm frame of mind, right? Maybe meditate it out a little bit and then ask them out. Last tip, ask yourself, how can I be more patient with myself? So I can say be more patient, right? but like, how do you do that? So instead, how can I be more patient? What can you do 
to be more patient with yourself? Got to answer that question. What I can do to be more patient with myself is ask this person out and acknowledge. I mean, this is just a sample answer. You have to come up with your own. Okay. No cheating. I got to ask, what can I do to be more patient with myself? Well, like I can ask this person out and if it doesn't work out and I don't get laid and I don't live happily ever after, I can be okay with myself. I can be more patient with myself. I can acknowledge that I missed these opportunities, right? I went down this path instead of going down this path, and it's going to take me some time to get back. So I can ask this person out and I can get rejected and I'm going to be patient with myself that I'll do better next time. So people say be more patient, but like how? So that's something you've got to ask yourself. Can you give yourself a pass if things don't work out? The basic issue with being a virgin is that in life we have milestones, right? Like we start dating at a particular age, we get laid by a particular age, a certain milestone. And what happens is as we miss those milestones, we start to lack faith in ourselves. We start to become insecure about ourselves. As we become insecure about our ourselves, it becomes easier to miss further milestones. This is the virginity trap. Since I'm insecure and I haven't gotten laid in high school, when I go to college or uni, now I can't get laid there because I'm a virgin and I don't know how it works. And so then I don't get laid in college and now I don't know how to date and now I I feel more insecure. So the more you miss milestones, the more insecure you feel, the more insecure you feel, the, the easier it is to miss milestones and the harder it is to catch up. This is your situation. Now there are solutions is right. There's got to be some way to fix this. And so then people will offer you two solutions. They'll say, fix your shame, work on yourself, become confident in yourself. Just fix all of those things. Work on the shame and in insecurities. You need to go to therapy. That's great. It, honestly, it is. I'm not saying that sarcastically, but you can go to therapy for a year and it's not like people are going to be lining up outside your door to have sex with you at the end of that. At least maybe I'm not good enough of a therapist to be able to get, get my patients to do that. I, I don't know. I don't think that's a reasonable outcome, right? So like, we'll deal with the shame or there are the people, hey, I will teach you five techniques to guarantee we're going to use neuro-linguistic programming and I'm going to teach you bio-psycho hacks to get you laid. When you want to talking to a girl and she goes like this, you go like this, you mirror her and then she will get laid. That's how it works. I'm going to teach you the secrets, only $59.99. Sign up now with discount, and I'll teach you the secrets of getting laid. And so people will teach you techniques, right? There, there are like some techniques, like smile, like how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. But the problem is when you try to go do that, when people give you advice about the practicalities of it, if you're carrying around that ball of shame, then like you can't do those things because the shame is going to like bleed into everything else. People say, oh, you need to socialize more. But when I socialize more and I have all these thoughts about how I'm a loser, like that's not going to work well, right? Because the advice works for those people because they're playing with a different set of cards. Like that's the basic issue is that if people are socially, if they hit all those milestones, the hand of cards they're playing with, with the stats on their character sheet are different from your stats. And the advice doesn't apply to you because your stats are different. Your level is different. So what you've got to do is deal with both of these problems at the same time. It's a synergistic approach and an acknowledgement that there's an internal emotional component that when you try to move out into the world is going to influence your thoughts and behaviors. You have to understand what that internal emotional component is and catch it in the act. And I know people are going to be like listening to this and wondering, okay, how do I fix it? I know this sounds absolutely insane. You don't have to fix it. All you need to do is be aware of it. Awareness precedes control. Like literally when I'm working with patients who struggle with this kind of thing, or even working in a professional standpoint or doing consulting, all you have to do is teach human beings what the playing field looks like and how to navigate. And then your mind and body will take over on its own. As you catch the thought, all people suck. No, that's not true. Some people, all people suck some of the time. People are allowed to have bad days. As you catch that thought and you shift in your mind for a fraction of a second, your attitude will change at the party. People will be more open to you. And that's the tricky thing is success in a relationship or getting laid is not like a A to Z list of steps, right? It's about shifting your attitude. It's about confidence. And like, the thing is, all of those abstract things, we can't operationalize into like 15 steps, 15 steps to become confident. And so how does that attitude shift happen? It happens internally. And it starts with the awareness of thoughts. So if you're a virgin, and however old you are, and I'm sure there are people who are watching this who are 40-year-old virgins, and people who are watching this who are 14-year-old virgins, and you all all feel the same. It's not about the age, but there is a component of missed milestones which we have to acknowledge. And so intentionally, you have to go out into those social situations, but combine the internal work with social intention, and then slowly start to level up. Is this going to work for you? I honestly don't know. Worked for me, 
but I can't say. Your mileage may vary. But what I can say with a lot of confidence is that this is the most consistent thing that I have found that works with the most people. The rest of it is up to you. Questions? <laughs> Seiko 5 is saying, but you're married. So I don't know. Are you saying that that did work for me or didn't work for me? Alexandra Fern, Fern, what if you're incredibly people picky with people you're attracted to? I don't think that that, I think that's fine. Like, I, I think that's, if you're picky, you're picky, right? So all that means is that if you want to try to form a relationship, then you just need to increase the scale of who you meet. So if you're attracted to three out of 10 people versus one out of 10 people, all that means is that you're going to have to, you know, to have an opportunity with 10 people, you've got to have 33 exposures or you've got to have a hundred, right? That's all. That's the only difference it makes. There is another thing to consider, which is to understand why you're attracted to the people that you're attracted to and whether there's some work to be done there. So whether there is some kind of like, you know, if you're attracted to traits that are not good for you in some particular way, or there's some flexibility there, like learning to appreciate different kinds of people, like there could be some work there, but but if I'm catching thoughts within myself, how can I listen to another party? It's a good question. Two mata for faka. It's hard. Right. But if you really pay attention to the way that you converse with people, we're not usually always paying attention to the other person. We can spend a little bit of time with ourselves, like usually like your mind wanders when you're in a conversation a little bit. The other thing is that you don't have to do this while you are in conversation. So what I would do is like when I'm walking over. So I remember going through this process in college where like I made an intent. I decided I was going to try to be more social and like I would leave the room. Right. So I, I would say like, OK, I didn't want to go to the party, didn't want to go to the party, didn't want to go to the party. And what I realized is that I could mentally reset by taking a shower. So I'd take a shower and then I'd get dressed for the party. And then like if I could do that, then I could get out the door. As I'm walking over to the party, all kinds of anxieties are going through my head. What about this? 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 And then like, just process those, like acknowledge what you're feeling in those moments at the party. Like, you know, okay, this is going to be scary, things like that. And then there may even be certain things that you can reassure yourself with, right? Which is that I'm going to go to the party, but I don't have to stay for four hours. I'm going to try to have a good time for half an hour or one hour. If I'm not feeling it, I can always come home and play Diablo. So, but I'm going to stay for at least half an hour or one hour, right? So I'd promise myself half an hour, but I'd really shoot for one hour. Okay, we're going to do minimum of half an hour, but if we can hit one hour, like that's an accomplishment. And then I'd go and then and I'd be like intentional about talking to people. And what do you know? Time would fly by. Oh, two hours has gone by. John Export is asking, what do you do when you lost your virginity and still have those problems? I love that you asked that question. So here's the thing that a lot of the virgins don't know is that I know it's going to sound crazy. Getting laid ain't going to fix all the problems. It's not like busting a nut makes all the internal shame go away. It's like, boom, magic eraser for all the shame and insecurity in your life. Shockingly, as a psychiatrist, in my professional opinion, sometimes getting laid makes the problem worse because here you were thinking that it would fix everything and it doesn't fix everything. And then you get into this weird cycle. Okay, now I've gotten laid, but I still feel empty inside. And then you can like, but there's some kind of oxytocin. There's some kind of connection. There's some kind of intimacy. And then you start, can you, even this has happened. I've seen this happen where sometimes you will become, I'm trying to think, I'm thinking of it. You will become, and this is not a gender specific term. You'll become a slut. You can become a man slut, woman slut. And then you'll start having sexual engagements to try to assuage your internal insecurities. And it won't work because it doesn't work like that. And you'll start to like lean into sex as a substitute for emotional needs and emotional work. And then that's a whole other can of worms. And then if you're out there and you're listening to this as a virgin, it's like, yeah, give me that can of worms. Way better than the can of worms I got. I'm not trying to shame them. I, like by all means, uh, apologies if I, if I did that. I'm not saying that it's bad to sleep with a lot of people. I'm not making a value judgment on that. What I'm saying is that using sex and a prolific amount of sex, when having sex once doesn't fix your emotional security, sometimes what happens is people will try more, right? Like, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And the more that you try to do it to try to fix those internal emotional needs. So I've seen this in patients who have sex addictions. I'm not shaming them for having sex. Like, that's not my intention. If I did, I apologize. What I'm saying is that it doesn't fix the problem, which is what's really shocking to the people who haven't had sex. I'm just saying, like, it ain't going to fix it. Like, I, I just don't know how to say this. If you have years of emotional insecurity and shame and feeling like you're unlovable, an orgasm is not going to fix that. I, I, I honestly, in terms of the word, uh, hopefully it's okay to use that word. I, I honestly, I don't know if you'll notice, I paused for a second and tried to think of a word that describes someone who has a lot of sex that wasn't that word. I couldn't think of one. Promiscuous. 
but that's an adjective. I guess I could have said, I should have said, people will become promiscuous. No, 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 but I mean, I understand that y'all are trolling, but like, I do need, you guys do realize that sometimes I'll go to like places and give lectures at universities. And it's such a charged word, I need a better word. Like really, I need a better word. Can y'all help me with that? Is there a word? But see, to say that they're addicts is not appropriate at that point. That's the problem. It's not clear whether they have a, an addiction. I don't know. Okay, so it like, seems like y'all can't, Casanova. Okay, y'all can't come up with something either. So that's, maybe we'll check a... Yeah, that's what I was... So Giga V9 is saying serial sex haver. <laughs> I'll use that, I guess. Because that certainly rolls off the tongue. Yeah, maybe I can say they'll be, they can become hypersexual. That's probably better. Thank you, chat. Jaren Grinders. They become grinders. Help? Questions? Is it okay that we talked about this? It ain't your fault that you're a virgin. It's okay to be a virgin. Ain't no problem with it. We're all born virgins. And because you'll get advice from some people that don't understand the internal struggles and you'll get people who will try to fix the internal struggles, but in fixing the internal struggles doesn't actually substitute for the lack of social milestones. So you got to do both.